morning, then we'll get to the message. Um, it's always nice when the uh, special kind of coordinates with the message and gives the same the same message and, and song before the message and um, this is not gonna be one of those times <laughs> but uh, um, I sure am proud to be an American thankful for what this country was founded upon thankful for those who sacrifice and lay down their lives for our freedoms um, but this is not going to be a song uh, about that. Um, I unfortunately don't know any songs, how to sing or play any songs of that nature. But um, I love this song. I've played it and sung it here a couple of times. Um, hopefully it's not getting repetitive. But um, I love it because it's one that I can relate to quite a bit. And um, I'm very familiar with seasons in my life where um, I backslide, I... I let things go, I let Bible reading go, I neglect my prayer life the way, and, and I don't do things the way I should, and I, I let my soul and my, my spirit go cold and calloused, and, and I get, get hard, you know, I just feel like you get hard, and, and uh, I've done that many times in my life, and, and I sometimes a circumstance and the Lord will break me, or, or sometimes I just come to my senses and, and realize that I'm cold, and I say, Lord, please break my heart, because I need to be broken. And, um, and I'm thankful for the fact that as a child of God, uh, he, He's never through with me. As long as I'm alive, he's, he's willing to, to remold me, reshape me, if I'm willing to let Him. So this song talks about that. today. 
Thank you, Brother John. All right, let's have all the kids, Compass kids, up and at them and ready to go. There they go. Praise the Lord. All right, heading back to Kids Church. Appreciate Brother Caleb, Miss Hannah working with the kids, Miss Sandra Horde back in Toddler's Church, doing a great job. Thank God for those dear servants of the Lord. Amen. Second Timothy this morning, if you have your Bibles, we invite you to turn with us to Second Timothy chapter number two this morning. Second Timothy chapter number two. One of the most intriguing outfits in uh, the United States military is the third. U.S. Infantry, traditionally known as the Old Guard. The Old Guard. It's the oldest active duty infantry unit in the Army. It's been around since 1784. The Old Guard. The Old Guard. It's the Army's official ceremonial unit and escort to the President. It also provides security for Washington, D.C. in time of national emergency since World War II. The Old Guard has served as the official Army Honor Guard. And um, in that capacity, third, the 3rd third Infantry soldiers are responsible for conducting military ceremonies at the White House, the Pentagon, national memorials, and elsewhere in the nation's capital. In addition, as many of you I'm sure know, soldiers of the Old Guard maintain a 24-hour vigil at the Tomb of the Unknowns there at Arlington, Virginia. I don't know what you know about the Old Guard, but I, I love these kind of things. I've studied a little about it, and I want to read to you some things that are assigned to this oldest of Army units, is this guarding of the unknown soldier. May I ask this morning, is there anyone here that's ever been there to the unknowns, a tomb? Yes, wonderful. I'd love to do that. But the old guard, you know that, do you know how many steps the guard takes during his walk across the tomb of the unknowns? 21, yes. It alludes to the 21-gun salute, which is the highest honor given any military dignitary. Uh, do you know how long he hesitates after his about face to begin his return? Walk, do you, it's 21, 21 seconds. The same reason as, as the first answer. Uh, did you know that his gloves are wet? His gloves are moistened to prevent his losing his grip on the rifle. Uh, do you know that uh, he does not carry his rifle on the same shoulder? All the time. He carries the rifle on the shoulder away from the tomb. After his march across the path, he executes an about face, moves the rifle to the outside shoulder. Do you know how often the guards change? They change every 30 minutes. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Now listen to this. What's required of these guardsmen, these old uh, guard uh, soldiers of the unknown tomb? Well, gu uh, guards are uh, who apply, those who apply for guard duty, they must be between five foot ten and six foot two tall. Uh, his waist size cannot exceed thirty inches. 
That leaves me way out there. Other requirements of the guard, they must commit two years of life to guard the tomb. They live in a barracks under the tomb and cannot drink any alcohol on or off duty for the rest of their lives. They cannot swear in public for the rest of their lives and cannot disgrace the uniform or the tomb in any way. After two years, the guard is given a wreath pin that is worn on their lapel signifying they served as guard of the tomb. There are presently only 400 worn. The guard must obey these rules for the rest of their lives or give up the wreath pin. The shoes are specially made with very thick soles to keep the heat and cold from their feet. There are metal heels or heel plates, rather, that extend to the top of the shoe in order to make the loud click as they come to a halt. Listen to this. There are no wrinkles, folds, or lint on the uniform. Guards dress for duty in front of a full-length mirror. The first six months of duty, a guard cannot talk to anyone, cannot watch television. All off-duty time is spent studying the 175 notable people laid to rest in Arlington National Cemetery. A guard must memorize who they are, where they are interred. Among the notables are President Taft, Joe Lewis, the boxer, and Medal of Honor winner Audie Murphy, the most decorated soldier in World War II. Every guard spends five hours a day getting his uniform ready for guard duty. I found this out uh, as I was reading a little more about this just yesterday. In 2003, many of you may remember Hurricane Isabel uh, came through Washington, D.C. And uh, the U U.S. Senate, the House, took two days off uh, with anticipation of the storm. On the ABC Evening News, it was reported that because of the dangers from the hurricane, the military members assigned the duty of guarding the tomb of the unknown soldier were given permission to suspend their assignment. They respectfully declined the offer by saying, no way, sir. <laughs> Soaked to the skin. Marching in the pelting rain of a tropical storm they said that guarding the tomb was not just an assignment. It was the highest honor that can be afforded to a service person. The tomb has been patrolled continuously, 24-7, since 1930. These sentinels have a creed. This is it. Quote, My dedication to this sacred duty is total and wholehearted. In the responsibility bestowed on me, never will I falter. And with dignity and perseverance, my standard will remain perfection. Through the years of diligence and praise and the discomfort of the elements, I will walk my tour in humble reverence to the best of my ability. It is he who commands the respect I protect, his bravery that made us so proud, surrounded by well-meaning crowds by day, alone in the thoughtful peace of night. This soldier will, in honored glory, rest under my eternal vigilance. End of quote. Paul, the great apostle, was writing to his, his, his young student, and son in the faith, Timothy, Timothy, in the second book of Timothy, if you would just stand together as we honor the reading of God's Word. And I want to share with you some thoughts from chapter number 2 of 2 Timothy in the first four verses. Paul said, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou, therefore, Timothy, listen, thou, 
Therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. This morning I want to speak to you on the subject a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, Father, I pray this morning that I might have the attention of God's people. Help us today to focus on this very, very important passage of Scripture. God, help us to remember that we're here for a very important purpose. And there'll be times of conflict. And there'll be times of battle. And there'll be times when we'll have to wield our sword and unsheath our weapon. There may be times, Lord, when we're going to have to, spiritually speaking, go to battle with the devil and with the enemies of our soul. And God, today, may may we as Christians be ready, prepared, passionate about doing just that. God, help us today. Help me as I preach. If there's someone here today that's not saved, Lord, certainly we want to see them get saved. But this morning, for God's people, help us to get re-energized, revived, ready, prepared to be good soldiers of Jesus Christ. We ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen, and you might be seated this morning. I don't know about you, but I love my country. I love my country. I am a Christian, but I am a Christian patriot. I love and appreciate and honor every soldier that has put on a uniform and fought for the freedoms that we enjoy in this country. I want you to know I believe you do the same, and I know that whenever I see someone in my daily course of of, of things as maybe I'm at a restaurant or, or walking into a grocery store or some other place of business and see maybe some older gentleman with a, with a ball cap on and, and it's decorated and it says something to the effect of Korean conflict or Korean War or, or Vietnam or, or whatever it may be. I always try to stop and shake that man's hand and let him know how much I appreciate his service. I'm saddened, aren't you, to see so much disrespect in our day concerning service men and women. How sad it is that we don't take the time to honor those people who are on the front line to defend our freedoms as a country. Listen, I'm telling you this morning, it is no secret that there are people in our government, there are people in our world, there are people even in our own country that are trying their dead level best to undo our freedoms. To take away our liberties. To make us slaves in our own land. And I'm telling you, this is a day when you and I need to first and foremost appreciate those who've already been down that path and have laid that standard and set that example for us. And we ought to appreciate every one of them for their service. And I don't say that with any hesitation at all. One of the great regrets of my life, and you've heard me say this before, is that I did not spend time in the military as a young man. I believe I I might have done good. It might have been good for me to at least have experienced that, that, that going through basic training and all of the rest. But it just so happened, by the way, that that uh, Vietnam War had just come to an end when I reached 17 years of age. And it was also at that moment that I accepted Christ as my Savior, uh, just after I turned uh, 17. And therefore, I believe it was God's will, no doubt in my mind, that I did not join the U.S. military. But I tell you this morning that when I got saved, I joined God's military. Now, whether you know this or not, or whether you like this or not, my friend, when you got saved and you became a part of the family of God, you also became a part of the army of God. You became a soldier. Listen to me this morning. You became a soldier. And it's it's imperative that every one of us realize that there's an enemy on the loose. Are you listening to me? 
Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, and he is no friend of you. I used to tell the young people in, in my youth department, they thought it was kind of cute, but it's truth. The devil will take you like a piece of juicy fruit gum, chew all the goody out of you, and spit you on the sidewalk for somebody to walk on. He don't care about you. He's not your friend. I tell you this morning, the world is not your friend. And the Bible's clear when it says to be friends with the world is to be at enmity with God. You cannot be a friend of God and a friend of the world at the same time. These are things that Paul is talking about in this passage to Timothy. He's trying to make sure this young man knows that there's going to be battles, there's going to be conflict, and, and we've got to be prepared to be good soldiers of Jesus Christ. How prepared are you? I've often wondered about America, how easy we have it in our country, how little sweat we really do, how, how, uh, how easy we have to, 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 to work. And by the way, I was, I was listening to a program coming to church this morning on the radio. I don't know who, the, who, who was talking. It, was, it may have been uh, uh, Henry Florsheim, I think is his name, maybe. Uh, city council guy, whatever, city council, what is that guy? Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Him, somebody was talking. They were talking about our city. And uh, I love being here in Wichita Falls, but I'm telling you, we've got our problems. And he said one of the things that really disturbs him is that many times businesses will say, hey, we're coming to Wichita Falls. We're coming here. We want, we want to open shop. We want to open a business. We want to get started here. But one of the things they always ask and they always find out to the negative is that there's not enough people who are willing to really work. <clears throat> That's sad, isn't it? Amen. It's sad that we don't have young people today. Hey, listen, I remember my first job. I was 12 years old. And I got a job sweeping a parking lot. BJ's Quickie Food there uh, off uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, Lake Lamont Road, just down the street from where I lived as a little boy. A dollar an hour. I mean, a dollar an hour. And I raked. I mean, I, I, I swept that parking lot. Then I'd go in and bag ice out of the ice machine. And I was making a dollar an hour. And, buddy, I was buying up all the mad magazines I could get. <laughs> Remember those days? Crazy. But I was willing to work. My daddy may have been a, he may have failed in a lot of areas, but one thing my daddy did not fail in, he was a man who was willing to work. He was what you call a, a, a working alcoholic. He, he, yes, he was an alcoholic, but he'd work and, and, and he taught us boys to work. Amen. It's sad to say that we have so many young people today who, who, who the, the main part of work to them is, is getting out of bed. Put them in the yard and, 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 and put a lawnmower in their hand. They don't know what to do with it. I, I'm not being mean this morning, but we have got to get back to putting some gristle in our young people again. Amen. Just a little gristle. You, mean, you know what gristle is. Put a little something in their soul. A little passion. A little strength. Something that will drive them on and help them in life to succeed. You know why some people don't recognize success? And I think it was Albert Einstein that said this. Um, he said the re or no, it was Thomas Edison said the reason most people don't recognize success is that it's usually dressed up in overalls. I like that. Amen. He was also the one I believe was attributed to the quote that in, that uh, success is one percent inspiration and ninety nine percent perspiration. Now the fact is we've got to get this going again, folks. Our kids need to know what it is to work and to sweat and to be strong, to build them biceps and to build that stamina and know what it is to work a little while and sweat a little while and to be strong and to grow up with some gristle. Amen. Help me out this morning. Amen. Amen. What's wrong with us? My friend, listen, our enemy knows I don't believe our country will fall from the outside in. I think it's going to fall from the inside out. 
Oh, that we might, and listen, I want to say it, stop and say this. We say that generally speaking, but I do know young men today that have stood and, and taken their stand and they've done the right thing and they've, maybe they've joined the service. I think of, of young men from this church that have done just that and, 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 and have served their country and thank God for that. And some still serving their country today. And I thank God for all of those. And listen, that's wonderful. Pray for those folks. But I'm telling you this morning, we got to get some strength. We need some help. What happens? It's easy enough. And back to that conversation that that guy was having on the radio this morning, talking about the lack of help. And he said, one of the areas of our city that's growing the most, you know what's growing the most in our city today, population-wise? It's the senior element of our, of our city. More seniors are coming our way, which is wonderful. That's great. You know? But where are the young people that are moving to their families? Man, we're doing everything to try to draw them. Got two new high schools coming on the way, you know. But we're losing teachers. Does that make sense? But I'm just saying, we got to have, uh, we, we need new folks, new families coming in, young people really ready to work. I thank God yesterday we was working out there in the Family Life Center and Brother Braden, he was out there. I think I saw Brother Braden break a sweat. Can you imagine? I think, yeah, I think I saw a piece of a little perspiration on his forehead. He's out there working. I saw Josiah, he's in there, and he's got that little uh, appliance dolly, you know, and he's moving a little glass at a time, but he's getting it done. Working it out. You say these things, you, you hear me say these things, you think, oh, you're just pitching a fit, and all. listen, here's the problem, here's the reality. The reality is the world it's not going to be so easy on them. The world doesn't love them. The devil doesn't love them. And I'm telling you, it's going to come a time in their life where they're going to have to know how to stand and be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. They're going to have to. They're going to have to. A good soldier. Of Jesus Christ. Now, I know some things this morning. I want to point out four things, if you'd allow me quickly this morning. I won't be long. But notice, first of all, a good soldier must be strong. Verse number one. He must be strong. Circle the word strong. Thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong. You see, that's why. In the military, that's why in basic training, the, uh, those young men go through all kinds of, of things to build that strength in their body, you know? That's why they get up before the crack of dawn and run and, and maybe run for miles fully uh, equipped and loaded up. Maybe uh, that's why the Army and those five branches there, the Army, the Navy, the, the Marines, the, the Coast Guard and the Air Force, and why these, these, they go through these basic trainings. Why? To build up their stamina, to build up their strength. That's why they do... Uh, Set-ups and chin-ups and push-ups and throw-ups. That's why they march and march and march some more. That's why they dig trenches and then turn around and fill them back up again. Why? Making men out of them. That's why. Give them some grit. Give them some backbone. Make them strong. We have an enemy and our enemy must never be underestimated. Are you listening to me? Never. In Ephesians, if you'll turn with me, chapter 6 this morning. Ephesians chapter 6, again, we have reference to this battle that we're in in chapter 6 of Ephesians. And verse 10, uh, Paul said this again. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Why? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Listen to this. And having done all to stand, learn to stand. Listen, it's not been easy. I, I think back through the years of my ministry and 40 plus years of ministry. And I remember when I got saved in the Church of God church in Kilgore, Texas. And I thank God 
for those dear friends that I had there. But there came a moment in my Christian life when as I studied the Word of God, I began to believe in things like eternal security. Once saved, always saved. Amen. Amen. By grace, plus nothing, minus nothing. I began to believe that the Word of God, the King James Bible, is a complete and perfect inspired Word of God. I came to believe that there was a millennial period coming and a tribulation that would take us out. I began to believe in these things, and they were contrary to the things I was being taught in that church. And there came a moment in time when I had to say, I have to make a choice. Either I'm going to stand with what I believe to be the truth, or I'm going to stand with those dear friends and loved ones that I've known for so many years. And it was not an easy choice. But my friend, I had to stand with truth. Amen. There's going to come times in your life when you're going to have to make choices like that. They're not easy. They're difficult. They're hard. They'll be misunderstood. You'll be misunderstood. They'll call you names. But you got to be strong. And learn to stand in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. I love that fact that he mentioned grace there in Timothy. Standing strong in the grace. Because my friend, listen, when it comes to moments like that, you're going to need grace. Amen. You're going to need grace. When you're... Kinfolk will call you all kinds of names and, 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 and reject you and disown you even. But you take your stand. Why? Because it's right. And this is the way I figure it. Me and God will always make a majority. For with God, nothing's impossible. Amen. Amen. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. As long as I follow the truth. As long as I follow the truth. You're going to have to take your stand. We live in a day and age when taking that stand is going to be more and more increasingly difficult. Listen, don't you think for a moment that if the Democrats had their way today, they would take every firearm out of our possession. They would do that in a heartbeat. I'm telling you, it's happening. You say, well, don't get too political. I'm just telling the truth. Look at their platform. It just tells it all. And the poor guy gets up and talks about in God's name and for God's sake and all that rest, that stuff, talking about how sad he is about the loss of life. And he's the, he, him and his compadre and the rest of that bunch are right in the middle of trying to get every baby they can aborted. Now what's the difference? Big problem here, big discrepancy, hypocrisy if you ask me. We're going to have to take a stand. Take a stand against homosexuality. Take a stand against lesbianism. Take a stand against transgenderism. We're going to have to take a stand against abortion. We're going to have to take a stand against these things. Our duty is to stand with God. Amen. Even if it makes us at odds with those around us. Take your stand. A good soldier. Stand. Be a good soldier. He's got to be strong. That's not easy to do. We need His grace. But it's got to be done. A good soldier must be strong. A good soldier must be faithful. Look at verse 2. Verse number 2 in 2 Timothy. He says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to to teach others also faithful, faithful. I like the Marines' motto, Semper Fidelis, always faithful, always loyal. In the military, every soldier is issued certain things that become his personal responsibility to take care of. You have a uniform. You've got to keep it clean. You've got to keep it pressed. You've got to keep it up. You got to, you're given a pair of boots. You've got to clean them. got to polish them. You're given a buck, a locker. You, you make sure it's neat and in order, a rifle. You've got to know how to break that thing down and clean it and grease it, put it back together. All these things have been given to you in trust as a good soldier. You got to be faithful with those things and trustworthy with those things. Can I tell you something this morning? God's given us some things too. Amen. He's given us right here the, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. We got to be faithful to this Word. We got to be trustworthy with this Word, rightly dividing the Word of truth. God's given us a local church. We need to be faithful to the local church. Amen. We need to be loyal to what God is doing through this local New Testament church. He's given you a testimony. You need to be faithful to your testimony. 
You know, my friend, listen, the easiest thing to lose in our day is your testimony. Just one little error, just one little negligence, one little word, one little action. And for the rest of your life, you'll bear that in your testimony. My friend, it's not, it's not easy to be strong and, and to take care of your testimony, but it must be done. God's given us a commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel. God's told us to go tell everybody we can about Jesus. I wonder this morning, do you carry tracts in your pocket? Do you give tracts out to people and tell them, hey, listen, I'd like to tell you about how to go to heaven. Let me show you this morning how to go to heaven. If you don't have time, will you read this tract? God loves you. He wants you to be saved. When was the last time you did that to someone? When was the last time? I'm not talking about, I'm talking about you this morning, not your neighbor, not the one in front of your body, you, me. When was the last time we told somebody how to be saved? Took them down that Romans road. My friend, that's been given to us as a trust. The Bible says, moreover, it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful, trustworthy. Oh, how we need to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. A good soldier is strong. A good soldier is trustworthy. Number three, a good soldier is committed. He is committed. Look at verse number three. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endure hardness. You know what that means? Endure hard things. There's going to be some things that happen that are going to be hard to endure. Endure hard people. There are going to be people that are hard to endure. Endure hard situations. There are going to be situations hard to endure. The soldier's life is unpredictable. His situation may change from day to day. He's never quite sure what to expect. It's a life of intense pressure and uncertainty, especially during war times. You think about the soldier who's who's recommissioned and, and deployed and back and forth. And we've known these things and folks that have gone away from their family for a lengthy uh, uh, time. And we have folks sitting here this morning that can tell you the intense pressure of those kinds of situations. It's hard to endure. But you're to endure them. Endure hard things. Why? Why would you do it? Because you're committed. You're committed to right. You're committed to God. You're committed to your wife, your husband. You're committed You've turned it over to the Lord and done what He told you to do and put you here to do. In, first, in 2 Corinthians, if you'll turn there in chapter number 11, in 2 Corinthians chapter number 11, notice these words in verse 23 through 28. Paul said this, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors more abundant in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I've been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by, my, by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness, and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak and I'm not weak? Who's offended and I burn not? Friend, listen, Paul went through every kind of terrible, horrible situation. Hard things. Yet we understand he was a man that was committed and stayed true. How easy. You know, how easy it is. I'm offended. Y'all didn't sing my favorite song. Or I didn't like that song you sang. You know, somebody wrote it and, you know, they're not quite right with God. And, you know, that song, uh, we got to pitch that song. Oh, uh, you know, you're just not feeding me, preacher. Wait a minute. Three questions I ask people that join our church. Number one, are you really saved? Number two, have you been really scripturally baptized? And number three, do you believe it's God's will that you be here? Figure that out. If it's God's will that you be here, then stick it out. Stick it out. Be committed to it. Be faithful to your church. Be faithful. Be faithful. Oh, listen, my friend. 
staying in the middle of God's will. Not always easy, but my friend, that's the best place in the world. Be committed as a good soldier. Number four, a good soldier must be separated. Must be separated. Back in Second Timothy again, and uh, and verse two, note or verse number four. Notice this: No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Why? That he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Chosen. God's chosen us. He has selected us. He has separated us to be a soldier. Now, whether you like it or not, if you're saved, you're a soldier. Now, you can't be a soldier in one army and wear another army's uniform. You can't talk one thing on Sunday and talk another thing on Monday through Saturday. You better make sure that your life, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, that you got a life that is the same every day. And it's unto the Lord. Separated unto the Lord. You know why I don't smoke? Well, number one, if God intended for me to smoke, he'd have put a chimney on my head. Amen. My my kids tell me I need new jokes. (laughs) But if you smoke, you're not the one smoking the cigarette smoking. You're just the sucker. But you know why I don't smoke? Because the Bible says, what? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? which you have of God, you're not your own. You're bought with a price. That's why I don't smoke. This body don't belong to me. It belongs to God. It's God's temple. Holy Spirit lives in me. Lives in you too if you're saved. Amen. 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 You know why I don't hang around with the, or the old crowd? Because they don't, they don't walk. They're not walking the same way I walk. And the Bible tells me in Amos that can two uh, uh, walk together lest they be agreed? I'm not walking with that bunch. I don't agree with that bunch no more. Or rather, they don't agree with me. So I got saved at 17 years of age, went back to school that next year with a big old Bible tucked under my arm. And that that old crowd looked at me and said, what happened to you? And I said, man, I got saved. That same crowd. I realized something. I didn't have to give up that old crowd. They gave me up. They gave me up. That's what separation's all about. I just belong to the Lord. I'm on His team. I'm on His side. I'm in His army. He's my captain. The captain of my salvation. I'm not ashamed of that for a moment. I'll do what He tells me to do. I'll go where He tells me to go. Whatever He says, I do. Why? I'm in His army. I'm separated unto Him. Oh, I was so much more I want to say this morning, but I'm telling you, it's important that we realize that we're soldiers. I share this with you and William. The front of my Bible. I found something many years ago. And I put it right here in the front of my Bible. And it's there for me to see and to read. I do every week. I'll go to that portion and read it. Here's what it says. I am a soldier. I am a soldier in the army of my God. The Lord Jesus Christ is my commanding officer. This Holy Bible is my code of conduct. Faith, prayer, and the Word are my weapons of warfare. I've been taught by the Holy Spirit, trained by experience, tried by adversity, and tested by fire. I am a volunteer in this army, and I am enlisted for eternity. I will either retire in this army or die in this army, but I will not get out, sell out, be talked out, or pushed out. I am faithful, reliable, capable, and dependable. If my God needs me, I'm there. I'm a soldier. I'm not a baby. I don't need to be pampered, petted, primed up, pumped up, picked up, or pepped up. I'm a soldier. No one has to call me, remind me, write me, visit me, entice me, or lure me. I'm a soldier. I'm not a wimp. I am in my place. Saluting my king, obeying his orders, praising his name, and building his kingdom. No one has to send me flowers, gifts, food, cards, candy, or give me handouts. I don't need to be cuddled, cradled, cared for, or catered to. I am committed. 
I cannot have my feelings hurt bad enough to turn me around. I cannot be discouraged enough to turn me aside. I cannot lose enough to cause me to quit. When Jesus called me into this army, I had nothing. If I end up with nothing, I'll still come out even. And I'll win. My God will supply all my needs. I am more than a conqueror. I will always triumph. I can do all things through Christ. Devils cannot defeat me. People cannot disillusion me. Weather cannot weary me. Sickness cannot stop me. Battles cannot beat me. Money cannot buy me. Governments cannot silence me. And hell cannot handle me. I'm a soldier. Even death cannot destroy me. For when my commander calls me from this battlefield, he'll promote me to a captain. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm marching, claiming victory. I will not give up. I will not turn around. I'm a soldier. God help us to be soldiers. Let the devil know that. Every chance you get, you let him know that. Devil, get thee behind me. I'm not going your way. I'm a soldier. Father, thank you so very much for taking us into your family. And making us a part of your kingdom. And we thank you, Lord, for bringing us into this wonderful opportunity to take our stand and to be, and to be, and to be called out and separated.